we'd like to start with a DH5000. It's a door type machine. I'd like to go over the installation. We'll take the front panel off and I'll show you the drain connection. Be sure not to pull the pressure tube out or the thermistor wires from the panel that leads to the machine. That's very important. It's easy to pull this out when removing the panel, so be very careful. Do not pull these two components away. The drain connection on the DH5000 is located underneath the machine, 2 inch OD dimension. It's a slip connection. You can use C, PVC, or copper, either one. It should handle 15 gallons per minute of water. What you're looking at now is the drain valve. At the very bottom of the drain valve, there's a drain connection. This is an automatic drain valve that will come on as soon as you cut the power switch off the machine. The drain valve will open and drain out through a floor drain. This is the terminal block for when you bring in the main connection. The power source is the outside cord for the power for the machine. When bringing the power source in, we provide this gray tube. You can feed the power line from the back of the machine through the tube. It assures that you have a nice clean route for your wire to be connected to the main terminal block. Here's the machine's electrical connection. This gives you the min-max average for the breaker size. On new installations, when bringing the main power to the power block, also check the overload setting or overload. This is not uncommon on new installations where the machine's been traveling on a truck. It can jar and trip the overload. Reset by pushing the black that has starred on it. When installing the DH5000, you'll want to make the fan connection, rinse aid connection, and detergent connection. Each is labeled for each device. Be sure the vent connection should be a single only 120 volts out to exhaust fan. This is the power, a coil of contact vent exhaust system. So be sure it's 120 volts signal only. When connecting the vent fan, rinse aid, and detergent, do not connect to the contactor for your detergent or any other components for your rinse or vent fan. These are outputs, 120 volt outputs. This fan connection is signal only, so it will not power an exhaust fan. Our transformer is not large enough to power a vent fan, so please make these connections when connecting all these components. Doing the installation, when you're resetting motor overloads, be sure to check the high limits for the booster tank and the wash tank. The booster tank high limits on the very top of the booster, about midway back. If it's tripped, you'll see a lot of red. Push the button down and that resets the high limit for the booster. After resetting the booster thermostat, we will focus on the wash tank thermostat high limit, which is located here in the center of the two thermostats. It's a red button. Push the button in, that resets the wash tank high limit. We want to talk about the DH5000 VHR, which stands for Ventless Heat Recovery System. And what we're looking at now is the 3 quarter inch cold water connection to the machine. Next, down below, you'll see a box that's mounted from the factory which may be taken off for shipping purposes, but can be mounted on the machine or can be remotely mounted on the wall. Below the box, you'll see a rinse aid connection. That's where the chemical is fed to the machine for the rinse aid final rinse. When installing the load and unload table, we highly recommend using a sink and a spray hose for your load section. Also, when connecting the table to the machine, assure that the table is fitting flush with the machine. Again, assure that the table is flush mounted to the machine. You do not want it to be tilted this direction. This is incorrect. This is correct. Also, we want to make sure you silicone the front and rear corners where the table connects to the machine to prevent any leakage. When connecting the table to the machine, assure that the table has a slope towards the machine so the water can drain back into the machine. So you prevent standing water. This applies on the load and unload table. This is the unload table. If you'll notice, it's slanted toward the machine to prevent standing water. On initial startup, on the power on the machine, you want to check the phase. Make sure it's phased out correctly. On three-phase machine, you have a 50-50 chance of it being correct or incorrect. To change the direction of the motor on a three-phase machine, we'll change L2 and L3 on your incoming power. This will change the phase on your wash pump motor contactor in overload. So again, changing the phase on a three-phase machine, you change it at the terminal block, L2 and L3. This will change the direction of the pump motor. This is the DH5000. 
This applies to the DH5000, DH5000 VHR, and the DH5000 DV direct vent. This is changing machine from a straight through operation to a corner operation. Now you see it as a straight through operation. This piece is to be removed with two screws and placed on the right side of the track. This will turn it into a corner application. So remove the two screws, reinstall this on the right hand side track assembly. Now it becomes a corner operation. What's very important on all the DH5000s is when you're setting the machine in place in the room, make sure the control located down below is in the inside turn of the table. We do not want the machine turned to the left where the controls will be underneath the table and to the rear. This will be very hard for access to control your machine. So please make sure that the machine is sat in the corner with the controls on the inside of the table configuration. We've already removed the track on the front of the machine and placed it on the right hand side of the machines toward the wall. Now this becomes a corner operation. Racks come in on the left side and pulled out on the right side, which is a left to right operation. The tables can be reversed, where this is a right to left operation. Your load table will be on the right hand side, pushing the rack in and pulling the rack out on the left side. For the DH5000 direct vent, we do provide an exhaust fan as you see here. This comes with the machine. It can be mounted on top of the machine or above the ceiling tile within a 50 foot run. Each elbow is equivalent to 10 feet of pipe, so it should not exceed 50 feet total. It can be mounted on its side. If mounted on the side, it is highly recommended to drill a hole in the bottom of the exhaust fan for any water to drain out. On the DH5000 direct vent, it does come with approximately 10 feet of cord. It needs to be wired into the exhaust fan. If the exhaust fan is mounted longer than the 10 foot piece of wire provided, they would have to provide their own wire, whatever length they need. The direct vent unit is shipped loose with the machine, is separate from the machine when it gets to the job site. It takes two men to put the direct vent on top of the machine. It's got four screws that holds it on. That will be shipped loose from the machine, from the factory. It has to be installed after the machine is in place. The primary function on this machine that's different from a standard machine on the inside is the direct vent. The direct vent pulls the water vapors and the hot air out of the machine after the cycles are complete. The detergent connections on a DH5000 is located on the right hand side towards the rear you have two plugs. The bottom plug is for your detergent conductivity cell. That's to detect how much detergent is in the water. The top plug is for your detergent injector port. That's removed and replaced with a fitting. Usually your chemical company will install the dispensing port and install the conductivity cell and line to inject the detergent. We want to talk about draining and cleaning the DH5000. The first thing to know is you need to clean the machine every meal period or every two hours of operation. To drain the machine, simply cut the power switch off. The machine will automatically drain for 10 minutes. You raise the door, remove the wash arms, spray the inside out. If you need additional time, simply cut the machine back on and right back off. That will give you another 10 minutes of draining time. Once you drain the machine, we want to make sure we take everything out of the machine. So you have the lower and upper rinse arm. Remove the thumb screw. The wash arm lifts off. The upper the same way. We remove the upper rinse and wash arm of the machine. They both slide down after removing the thumb screw. Once you have the upper and lower wash arms removed, remove the scrap screens. Take the scrap screens to the sink and back flush the screens. You can remove the filler plate. It has a slot in the rear. When reinstalling, make sure it's lined up in the slot. We're going to talk about the DH5000 pump intake screen. How to remove and clean it. Simply lift it out, take it to a sink, clean the strainer, and reinstall. Once you've removed all the screens, you want to make sure the bottom of the tank is wiped out and make sure the drain strainer is wiped clean after each meal period. Wipe the interior down real well, leave the doors open at night to dry out. When replacing the screens, you want to replace the filler plate first. You have a slot the filler fits into. That centers the filler. 
Replace the scrap screens. Make sure all the nozzles are clear. Rinse out the wash nozzle. Check all the rinse nozzles. Make sure they're open. You can use a paper clip to clean the rinse nozzles. We're going to replace the wash and rinse arm. Reverse the process. Assure that they both spin freely. Replacing the lower wash arm and rinse arm. Assure they both spin freely. First thing in the morning, you want to check the inside of the machine. Make sure there are no foreign objects in the machine. Make sure the wash arms, upper and lower, are in place. Scrap screens are in place and ready for the operation. Once you've checked the inside of the machine, close the door. Now you're ready for operation. Simply cut the machine on. The machine will automatically fill. Once it gets full, the heat will automatically come on. So we wait now until it fills up. On the DH5000VHR heat recovery system, this machine fills with cold water, so it takes longer for it to heat up to the proper temperature. Once the fill has stopped, at this point, you would wait till your wash tank comes up to a minimum of 150 degrees, which we're now showing 152. At this point, you're ready to operate the machine. Be sure to pre-scrub your dishes before putting them inside the machine. We always recommend using at least 110 degree water to pre-rinse with. Raise the door. Slide the soiled dishes inside the machine. This machine is an automatic door start machine. Lower the door and the machine will automatically start once the door is completely shut. The wash cycle is complete. Now the final rinse is on showing 20 PSI flow pressure. Now the machine has gone into the final rinse cycle and it shows 192 degrees, which is acceptable. The range is 180 to 195. At the end of the wash and rinse cycle, the heat recovery system fans will come on for 30 seconds. At that time, you will wait till the in-cycle light goes completely out before you raise the door. If you'll notice, there's no condensation. Remove the clean dishes and now you're ready for another soiled dish rack. We want to talk about the extended wash button that we show. This can be activated once the machine's in the wash cycle. When pushing the extended wash down to the extended mode, this will extend the wash cycle 30 seconds. That gives you an extra wash if you've got soiled dishes. It holds it in the wash cycle for an additional 30 seconds. Then it will proceed onto the rinse cycle and complete the cycle. Depending on the local water conditions, your machine may or may not need deliming. If you see a white scale buildup in the machine, that means there's a lime buildup and it needs deliming. We recommend getting with your local chemical company and let them suggest how much and how long you should delime the machine. This should be only done if needed in certain areas. Certain regions are worse than others if you've got hard water. So either refer to your service manual or your local chemical company regarding the deliming procedure. The tall door is just like the DH5000 except it has a 27 inch clearance for tall 18 by 26 bake sheet pans. It also has a cycle you can choose for different times. For instance, you can select one minute, one and a half, four minutes and six minutes by simply turning. You would want to make this decision after the cycle before raising the door. So after the cycle, if you want to have a four minute cycle for the next cycle, you change it four minutes and lift the door. Remove your clean dishes, put your soiled dishes in, close the door, it will automatically start and go through a four minute cycle. We want to talk about the DH5000 VHR, which is your ventless heat recovery system that you see here. You do not need exhaust hood on DH5000 VHR, This is the box for the heat recovery system. This is mounted at the factory. We remove the box and place it behind the machine and strap it to the back of the machine for shipping purposes. They have an option to put it back on the machine or they can mount it remotely on a wall.
When shipping the DH5000 VHR heat recovery system, we disconnect the hose at your incoming water connection, and the outlet at the booster is disconnected for shipping purposes. When reinstalling the heat recovery system, you'll want to make this connection to your incoming water at the Y strainer and the outlet side of your booster. They must be connected on initial installation of the DH5000 VHR. If you'll notice when making the third connection for the VHR, if you can slide the springs over, which we have already, to the left, that makes more easy access to this connection point. When sliding the springs over, raise the doors. It takes tension off the springs and makes it easier to slide them over to make access for the connection point. This is for your final rinse manifold and this comes out of your heat recovery system. Be sure to slide the springs back into place, which would be completely vertical. This is the DH2000 model. It's a fresh hot water machine. It's 60 second cycle. It comes in a 208, 240 single or three phase configuration. It is an automatic door operating machine. Open and close the door to start the machine. It comes with a built-in booster as an energy sensory feature. The rinse sensory feature is simply holds the machine in the wash cycle until the booster has reached 180 degrees. So if you have low incoming water temperature, it will prolong the wash cycle until the booster has reached 180 and then allow the machine to go into a final rinse cycle. So therefore, your cycle time may exceed the 60 seconds if you have low incoming water temperature. The rinse sensory applies to all your door machines, the 2000 and the 5000, and also the under counter machine. On the DH2000 and the MD2000, they will need an exhaust hood over the machine. Make sure the hood is larger than the machine. When you're raising the doors, condensation escapes. You need to capture that condensation within the hood. On the left side of the main control cabinet, you'll find a data plate. The data plate will have the model, serial number, the voltage, and phase, which is very critical. If you're calling in for service or needing information, technical information, always provide the serial number. We want to talk about the electrical connection power to this DH2000. When connecting power to the machine, make sure you have the proper wire size and breaker size. That can be found on the machine electrical connection inside the control cabinet near the terminal block. This will tell you exactly what size wire and breaker size you will need for this machine. Do not go by the data plate on the outside of the machine. Go by the data plate on the inside of the machine for your final electrical connection. And the final electrical connection is made at the main terminal block. This is your incoming power. This is power to all your components. So this one is a 208-233 phase machine with three wires, three hot wires, and a ground wire. This is your terminal strip inside the control cabinet with your exhaust fan connection, rinse aid connection, and your detergent connection. This is a high temp machine so there's no sanitizer. In order to connect the vent fan to the machine, you would connect it where it says vent fan connection. We provide 120 volt output to the exhaust fan. Do not power the exhaust fan with our machine. This is a signal only for the exhaust fan. Also, this is your rinse aid connection, again, 120 volts out. This comes on during the rinse cycle. Then you have the detergent connection, 120 volts out. It comes on during your wash cycle. So this is your exhaust fan and chemical connection point inside the main control cabinet on a DH2000 and an MD2000. Also, in every machine, you'll find a wire schematic that comes with the machine. It will be inside the control cabinet. It's preferred to leave it inside for the technician if he ever needs to look at it to troubleshoot the machine. Also, we'd like to talk about motor overload. When installing the machine and wiring the machine, it's a good idea to make sure the motor overload hasn't tripped during shipment. This one shows it not tripped. If it was tripped, the black button would be in the up position and the red button would be in the down position. You simply push the black button down, which says start, and that resets the motor overload. It's not uncommon for the overload to be tripped on a new installation. This pressure gauge is shipped loose from the factory inside the machine. 
so during the installation, you should remove it from the box, install it on the machine. In order to make the water connection and check the high limits, you would have to remove the front panel. Now you have access to the water connection, which is at the rear of this piping assembly. To make the water connection on the DH2000, it requires a 3 quarter inch MPT connection. We're using a rubber hose in this example. The line strainer is the point of entry for the main water connection. 3 quarter inch hot water, 110 or 140 is made here at the Y strainer. This is the pressure reducing valve. This is how you control your 20 PSI flow pressure on your final rinse. Adjust the nut or bolt in, clockwise increases the pressure, counterclockwise decreases the pressure, but we want to maintain 20 PSI flow pressure during the final rinse. This is how you can control it. On the DH2000, MD2000, this is your drain connection. We have it connected with a rubber elbow. This is a 2 inch OD connection. This is an automatic drain valve. When the power is turned off, the drain valve automatically opens up. With the front panel off during installation, it's a good time to remove this cover and make sure the wash tank high limit hasn't tripped. There's a red button. If it's tripped, it will be stuck out farther than it's shown here. Push the red button. It resets the wash tank heating element. It's not uncommon for that to be tripped on a new installation. So it's a good time to check this when you have the front panel off and making all your connections down below. The booster high limit is mounted on top of the booster behind this cover. Remove the cover. There's a small surface mounted high limit inside the box. The little red button. You simply push on it. That resets the high limit on your final rinse booster. Okay, I want to talk about the DH2000 uh, when placing in a corner, in a corner application. Be sure to have the gauges and control on the inside of the table configuration. If the machine was turned 90 degrees, the gauges would be on the back side in a corner installation, which would be very inconvenient for the operator. So make sure when placing the machine in the room in the correct corner, make sure it's turned where the gauges are on the inside of the table connections. So this would be a table on the left and a table in the front gauges towards the center of the operation. This is a straight through. On a corner installation, remove the front track with two screws. Place the front track on the right side. Now this becomes a corner installation. This is a continuation of converting the machine from a straight through to a corner machine. After repositioning the front track, you will need to remove the door bracket. You see that connects the right door to the front door. Remove the bracket. Take the same hardware, Plug the holes up on the outside. Once you've removed the bracket from the inside of the machine, disconnect the door lever from the right side door using the same hardware and a plastic spacer to plug the hole. We want to start the machine up and we'll start a cycle. So turn the power switch on. The machine will automatically fill. Once it gets full, the heat will automatically come on. At this point, you will want to wait until the wash temperature reaches 150 minimum, which this machine is already hot and shows 155. The final rinse will not reach 180 until it goes into the final rinse cycle. Then it should read 180 minimum. Now the machine is heated up, ready to put a rack of dishes in. Make sure it's centered between the tracks. Lower the door and the machine should start automatically. If your booster isn't satisfied within the wash cycle, it will remain in the wash cycle until the booster has reached 180 degrees. This is called a rinse century feature that's provided with all door type machines. It's now going into the rinse cycle. You'll notice it's reading 20 PSI on the gauge and above 180 on your final rinse gauge. When the cycle light goes out, the machine has completed its cycle. You can raise the door, remove the clean dishes and install a rack of soiled dishes. We recommend draining the machine after each meal period or every two hours of operation. This machine has an electric drain valve on it. To drain the machine, simply cut the power switch off. The machine will automatically drain. It will automatically drain for 10 minutes. If you need additional time, flip the switch back on and back off. It will reset and drain for another 10 minutes. We're going to start on the cleaning of the machine. You will want to remove the lower and upper spray arms with a thumb screw. Take them to the sink. 
Make sure all the nozzles are cleaned and not plugged and back flush the wash arm. Make sure the final rinse nozzles are not clogged. You can use a paper clip to clean these if necessary. After removing the lower rinse and wash arm, remove the upper rinse and wash arm with a thumb screw. It drops down. Clean it. Clean the nozzles. Wash the rinse nozzles. Also while you're in the machine, after removing the wash arms, remove the scrap screens, the filler plate. Take the screens to the sink. Back flush the screens. Clean the screens. Clean the drain. After removing the strains, you'll want to check the drain strainer. Make sure it's clean. Also remove the pump intake strainer. It simply slides up. Take it to the sink, flush and clean it, reinstall it. Wipe the tank bottom down. Wipe the interior of the machine. After cleaning the screens, place the filler back in place where it's slotted. Place the screens. After cleaning the rinse and wash arm, reinstall. They are interchangeable, so the top will go on the bottom and the bottom can go on the top. Not a problem. Ensure that both arms spin freely. Make sure the lower wash and rinse arms spin freely.